In metabolism, especially in catabolism, the one thing that links uh, glucose, fatty acids, and amino acids is the molecule acetyl-CoA. Now, from previous videos, you remember glucose goes uh, through the, the glycolysis pathway and becomes pyruvate. And then pyruvate can go into the mitochondria and uh, combine with coenzyme A to become acetyl-CoA. The same thing with proteins you, through uh, deamination, you can get acetyl-CoA. Uh, amino acids can also be directly converted into pyruvate, some amino acids. Now, there's 20 uh, amino acids that your body utilizes, and out of those, a, a handful of them will be converted to pyruvate when they're catabolized, and another handful can be converted directly into acetyl-CoA. Now, when the fatty acids are broken down, they go through a beta-oxidation. They cannot become pyruvate. They will go straight into acetyl-CoA. That's important because fatty acids, uh, if you'll remember right, you get pyruvate, and it combines with coenzyme A and it becomes acetyl-CoA. Now acetyl-CoA, the next thing it does is oxaloacetate will combine with it to form citrate. So going through the TCA cycle, acetyl-CoA requires oxaloacetate. So that's important because whenever it goes back around and finishes the TCA cycle, it reforms oxaloacetate. But if you subtract one here and add one here, the total oxaloacetate has not changed. And the reason that's important is because if uh, you could change the amount of oxaloacetate, then you could actually, by making more oxaloacetate, you could go back to pyruvate. However, fatty acid uh, breakdown cannot create more oxaloacetate, therefore it cannot actually become a carbohydrate. You cannot turn a fatty acid into a carbohydrate. However, with proteins, you can actually skip acetyl-CoA and go straight to pyruvate, so from that point you can actually uh, make more glucose out of uh, amino acids, you just can't out of fatty acids. Now here's a slightly uh, better look at exactly what happens so we can see that pyruvate becomes acetyl-CoA through coenzyme A pretty simple step um, amino acids however have uh, multiple possible fates depending on which amino acid you're talking about so alanine, glycine, threonine, cysteine, serine can all be converted straight into pyruvate um, and then uh, taking the amino acids like arginine, proline, histidine, glutamine, glutamate, they feed straight into the TCA cycle. However, they don't require, so for example, they'll create an alpha ketoglutarate. They do not need an isocitrate to combine with the alpha ketoglutarate to move on to the next step. So they can actually increase the amount of oxaloacetate whereas the fatty acids can't because fatty acids feed in as acetyl-CoA and they have to combine with this oxaloacetate before they can go back around to make oxaloacetate. Now the fatty acids, through uh, many steps actually, fatty acid will go through a cycle producing acetyl-CoA and uh, the cycle can repeat as more fatty acids are brought in. Each time a fatty acid is, uh, goes through the cycle, it loses two carbons off of, off of the end. So if you have an eight-chain fatty acid, it goes through the first time, it'll be a six-chain, goes through again, it'll be a four-chain. So it loses two carbons every time it produces acetyl-CoA. So the key point is that acetyl-CoA is the molecule that links these three metabolic pathways. On the other hand, Whenever you're just dealing with uh, 
uh, glucose, so when you're just dealing with glucose or amino acids, they can either be linked through acetyl-CoA or through pyruvate. So both of these can undergo uh, gluconeogenesis from pyruvate moving back upwards. Now the caveat to that is energy is produced from fatty acid catabolism so the energy produced here can actually be used to convert these molecules into glucose so fatty acid uh, breakdown can actually contribute to the production of glucose but it can't actually become glucose so in summary acetyl-CoA and, and or pyruvate are the two molecules that can link gluconeogenesis and I'm going to put gluco neogenesis fatty acid fatty acid synthesis nitrogen so we'll put nitrogen metabolism and the TCA cycle and I might actually add to that that it can link the production of amino acids so amino acid synthesis so from fatty acids uh, we can get acetyl-CoA which uh, and this is showing two acetyl-CoA's but we would get uh, and depending on how many uh, carbons are in the fatty acid chain we can get two three four uh, several acetyl-CoA's from a fatty acid but each acetyl-CoA of course would make three NADH's, one FADH2 and one GTP giving a total so here we're showing uh, 20 ATP's we'd get 10 ATP's from each fatty acid and then likewise with amino acids becoming pyruvate we get the same effect only we would get an additional two and a half ATP's during the de pyruvate dehydrogenase reaction and then of course some amino acids are fed in as intermediates to the TCA so they would produce uh, s some number less of reducing equivalents and less ATPs